Namaste beautiful yogis. Welcome to Ali Kamenova Yoga. My name is Ali and today we're doing yoga for anxiety. Yoga has been proven in many studies actually to relieve the symptoms of stress, anxiety, even panic attacks or OCD. So today we are going to focus on the poses that calm the mind and center us and take us out of the head and more into the heart and into the body. All you will need today for this class is yourself, your body, a mat, maybe a basic pillow. If you don't have a pillow, don't worry about it. But if you have a pillow, bring it and we may need the wall. So let's flow with strength and ease. into a comfortable seated position, Sukhasana, and closing the eyes for a moment to just bring the attention to the breath. Nice deep inhalations followed by complete exhalations through the nose, inhaling and exhaling through the nose. You can bring your hands on the knees and just gently rock for back and forth. Beginning to shift the breath from a regular breath to ujjayi breath, which is constricting the back of the throat slightly. So we are producing a rich sound, reminiscent of the sound of the ocean. And now we're going to exhale and round the back, look towards the navel. Inhale, arch the back, pop the chest up. Look up. Exhale, rounding. Drawing the navel in. Inhale, arching, opening. Exhale, rounding. Inhale, opening. And coming back to center, we're going to open the right arm out on the side of the body. Keep both sitting bones down and take the left arm up and over. From here, you're going to spin the right arm out and slightly back so that your shoulder is away from your ear and reach here keep that left sitting bone down ground it and changing sides opposite side spin the rib cage right rib cage open towards the ceiling keep opening that left shoulder dropping it away from the ear one more time right side in here, look down, soften the neck, look up, one more time, looking down, and looking up, opposite side. Soften the face muscles as you look down, soften the gaze as you look up. Coming back to neutral, and we're going to Take the hands in front of us and walk a little in front of us. Great. Spread the fingers wide open and we're going to take the toes under and take downward facing dog, walking in place here.
spread the fingers wide open and press into the base of each and every finger. Inhale the right leg up. Open the right hip on top of the left. Press the heel away from you. Lift. Now let's bend the knee and lift as high as we can. Keep the shoulders aligned here. The gaze between the hands. Slowly square the hips. Keep your left knee bent. Bring your right knee into your chest. Shift your weight, shoulders over the wrists, knee tucking into the rib cage. Round the back as much as you can. Step the foot through. If you can't step it through, bring it in with your hand and come up high lunge. Pull the belly in, and the navel should be pressing in and up. Keep trying up until you get it. Pressing the back heel away from us. Take a little deeper lunge here. Feel the lunge, feel the strength of your legs. That is a grounding pose. We're activating the sacral and first chakra let's bring the hands together and reach up and over the head towards the right extending the tailbone down and really feeling the stretch here look up back to center exhale down blank a really important pose Press the heels away from you and really work on your planks. Pull the belly in, really feel the belly connecting. If your core is active and strong, you will find yourself way more balanced in your thoughts. Your core is the middle point, the powerhouse and the middle point between the lower and the upper body. It connects the earth with the sky, so to speak. It is where balance lays. Lower down, either chaturanga or onto your belly, either co cobra or upward facing dog. Second chaturanga is always optional. It strengthens the core. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lifting the tailbone as high as you can here. Pressing the fingers and the base of each finger down. Pay attention to your thumb. Great, let's take the left leg up. Open the left hip on top of the right. You can keep a slight bend in the right leg. Press the left heel away from you. Shoulders are aligned away from the ears. Let's bend the left knee and lift as high as we can. Keeping that right knee bent, slowly begin to square the hips. Let's bring the left knee in and bring the shoulders over the wrist, pull the belly in. Rounding the back, drawing the knee in, step it through. High lunge. High lunge is so important in building a strong body, a balanced body. It is not just a strength pose. It is a flexibility and strength pose. It is a grounding pose. It works both on first chakra. It works on pretty much all the centers in the body. We want to ground ourselves. We want to expand the heart. Bring, bring some energy into the heart, which is underactive when the mind is overactive. So we want to activate. We want to activate the connection to the earth. We want to activate the heart, and that will balance the mind. We don't want it not active. We just don't want it overactive. Let's clasp the hands and reach over to the left, tucking the tailbone under. 
and just tune your awareness, tune your attention into the body. You want to feel your body. You want to understand, be aware of your body. Really feel it. Feel the subtleties here. And back to center. Exhale down. Plank. Pull the belly in and up, really contract the core. Really activating that third center, third chakra. Willpower, values, core values. Digestion, absorption. Assimilation, assimilation of food, of ideas. Lower down, either onto your belly or in Chaturanga. Upper dog, big breath in, Chaturanga. Downward dog, and we'll begin to flow a little more. Inhale the right leg up, step it through, high lunge. Let's bring the left hand on the floor, right arm up. Exhale, soften the belly. Press the back heel up. Right hand up and over the head, palm of the hand facing down. Let's bring the right hand onto the hip, look down at the floor and we'll glide the left hand in front of the right foot. Once you're here, level the hips, press the left leg up and take the right hand up, revolving half moon, balancing. Great, look down, bending the right knee and come up to standing. Left knee into the rib cage. You can draw a few circles here. And let's bring that leg around the standing leg. Left arm forward, right arm up. Wrap them and lift up. bringing your awareness to the central axis of your body, the, the imaginary line that separates the left from the right or divides the left from the right, the front from the back. Sit down. Great. Unwrap the hands, bring them in prayer. And let's go into warrior three. Level the hips, flex the foot, breathe. Step it back in high lunge. Lower the back knee down and reach back. Crescent. Hands in prayer. And you can bring the left elbow on the outside of the right knee, twist. Release the hands down, power the back, back leg, and let's squeeze the left, the right knee, sorry, into your chest. Squeeze. And knee tucks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Squeeze the belly. Ten. Lower down, cobra or upward dog. Optional second chaturanga, down dog. Feel free to do the second chaturanga on your knees. First chaturanga on your knees. Inhale the left leg up, step it through, high lunge. Pull the belly in, really feel your core in all of your moves throughout your day. Feel your breath. Nice, deep, diaphragmatic breaths. Oftentimes when we feel anxiety, we're breathing just here. We're not taking nice, deep breaths into the belly. Let's bring the right hand on the floor, left arm spins up, back heel stays straight up, 
reach over the head. Palm of the hand down, spin open the rib cage. And here you can look down, left hand to the left hip, shift into half moon, take the back leg up, left arm up. Challenge yourself, staying in your comfort zone only. Doesn't let us grow. We have to find the beauty of transformation. We have to embrace change as life is change. And we're going to bend the left knee and come up to standing. Bring your right knee into your rib cage. You can loosen up your ankles here. Wrap the leg around the standing leg. Right arm forward, left arm up. Wrap, lift. Soften the backs of the shoulders. Focus on your breath. Deepening the breath as we go. Now we're widening the back of the body. So breathe into the back of the body. Keep lifting the elbows. Great release. Hands in prayer. Unwrap. Warrior three. Focus on the balancing moves. That's going to get you out of the head and into the body. And step it back, high lunge. You can lower the back knee down. Open the chest, lift, lift, lift. Reaching back, hands in prayer, twist. And release. Exhale down, plank, knee tucks. Let's go one, two, really strong. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Lower it down, either knees on the ground or a full on chaturanga. Upward dog. Hold it. It's optional second chaturanga down dog. That second chaturanga is where we built true core strength. Downward facing dog, lifting the tailbone high. Inhale the right leg up, step it through, drop the back heel down, and we're going to windmill the hands into warrior two. Walk the left hand down the left leg, reach with the right arm up and over, really reach. Keep bending that right knee. Great, from here coming out, look at the floor. And shift, can you shift in one move? Right hand comes on the floor, half moon. It is not perfecting the pose or making it perfect. It is continuously working on the pose, being the pose, feeling the pose, being in the moment. Let's bend the right knee and step it straight back into warrior two. Hold it. Soften the upper body, soften the hands. Let's straighten the lead knee, hinging at the hips, reaching way ahead of you, open that left hip up. Lower the right hand down the right shin bone and reach up. Here, you can use a block, but I recommend that you get used to using the body as your main prop. 
because that leads to more freedom in the practice, less restriction, less, less stuff, less stuff. We're all trying to have less stuff, less mental stuff, and reaching over the head. Let's bring both hands down on the floor and bring the back heel up. One more stretch here. So tuck the tailbone under and feel that stretch in the hip flexor on the left side. Great, keep the left hand down, take the right arm up, twist. And power up the legs, come up to standing with a twist. Drop the right hand down the left leg. Reach over the head here with the left arm. Great, release down and squeeze your right knee into your right triceps. <laughs> and back, let's bring the knee to the triceps. Second time, three, four, steady moves, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Ten, good job. Lower down. Upward dog. Chaturanga. Downward facing dog. Breathe. Sometimes, sometimes we feel stagnant and we start feeling inspired when we begin to grow. And that's the reason why I always add the second chaturanga because that's where we grow. When we master a pose that's difficult, we feel growth. And also the body strengthens, the core strengthens. So we get out of stagnation and anxiety into inspiration and feeling grounded and calm and connected to our center, our core. Take the left leg up, step it through, straight into warrior two. Deepen a little here the stance, externally rotating the right hip and make sure that your left knee is pointing directly forward. You can spread your toes open and place them down. Keep them open, turn the left hand up and walk the right hand down the right leg. Really reach open here. From here coming out, and you can bend the back knee to give yourself a little, <laughs> a little push, and shift into half moon, opening the right hip on top of the left right shoulder eventually over the left rib cage spinning open left side of the torso lengthening here so we're not curving here but we're finding length all throughout the body the legs the torso once you're ready you can try to shift your gaze up where the true balance begins and where we snap right into the body Feeling the body, feeling the present moment, vibrant. Let's bend the standing knee, step back into warrior two. Good job. Doesn't matter if you completed it. <laughs> it's just that you're moving through the class. That's what matters. You can reach back one more time, straighten the lead knee and find triangle pose here. Shifting at the hips, lower the left hand down the left leg, micro bent in the knees is important here. Spin open the right rib cage. You can reach over the head. Looking down, lower down, 
take that back heel up. Feel the stretch of the hip flexor. Take the left arm up, power up the legs, and come up, standing with a twist, reaching up over the head with the right hand, left arm down the right leg in a twist here. Exhale down, squeeze your knee into your triceps. Really squeeze, pull the belly in, really activate the core, and let's go. One, knee to elbow, two, or knee to triceps. Three, squeeze the belly, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, plank. Strong core comes with practice. If you feel your core is weak now, keep coming back to the class because that only happens with practice. Over time, you will not believe, not believe it, how strong your core can get with this type of class. Lower down, upward dog. Second chaturanga, maybe on your knees. Exhale, downward facing dog. Lifting the tailbone as high as you can. Let's look under the right shoulder and under the left. Softening the gaze, softening the back of the head. Softening the jaw. Keep your tongue off the palate. Breathe. Listen to the calming sound of your own breath. Let's walk the hands back to the feet. Bend your knees, wrap your wrists around the elbows hanging here heavy. Upper body is hanging, the spine is decompressing, the neck is decompressing, the head is heavy, you're not supporting your head. Let's walk the hands to the front of the mat. Exhale, for downward facing dog. Inhale the right leg up. Step it through, drop the back heel down, warrior one. And here we're going to bring the right hip back, left hip spins in and forward so that we're squaring the hips. Breathe. Hands in prayer and shift into warrior three. Level the hips once you're in warrior three. Press the back heel away from you. You can keep a slight bend in the right knee. Step it back in high lunge. And again, transition into warrior three. Step it back in high lunge. Transition into warrior three. Step it back in high lunge. Warrior three, and this time lower down, hands either on the ground, or if you're a little more advanced, hands on the calves, and balance here. Great, let's step it all the way back into high lunge. Hands on the ground, right knee to left elbow, and let's go. Knee across, two, three, four, five, six, squeeze the belly, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Chaturanga, pull the belly in, upward dog, open the chest, widen the back, tuck the tailbone under or extend the lower back. 
Exhale, downward dog. Lifting the tailbone high. Let's take the left leg up. Step it through, warrior one. Press the back heel down and open your toes wide. Pressing into the back heel here, kind of pressing it down. It doesn't have to touch the floor, but that's the intention. Spinning the right hip forward. You can keep a micro bend in that right leg. Here the alignment is heel to heel, but feel free to step it out and have the heel set hip width apart, which is a more of a beginner version, variation, acceptable variation that allows you to keep the alignment yet modified to your liking. Let's bring the hands over the heart. Shift into warrior three. Level the hips, focus on a gazing point on the floor. Step it back in high lunge. Warrior three. Try to do it in one move if you can. If not, not a big deal. High lunge. Warrior three. High lunge. Warrior three. And begin to lower down, hands on the floor or onto your calves. Lifting into standing half splits. High lunge. Exhale down. And here we're going to bring the knee to the opposite elbow and back. Two. Three. Four. Five. Steady. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Step it back, plank. Strong chaturanga. Upward dog. Chaturanga. Downward dog. Inhale the right leg up, open the right hip on top of the left, lift the knee. And here, either stay here or step it behind into wild thing, lifting the hips as high as you can, chest as open as possible, heart lifting, blossoming. Side plank, left hand on the floor. Let's bring the knee to the elbow one. Two, three, four, five, maybe five more. Last one, hold, really squeeze, feel your core, plank, lower down onto your belly, bend your knees if you can grab your ankles, lift here if you cannot grab your ankles, Lift into Superman. Soften the shoulders here and feel the chest opening, the heart opening. Great. Hands underneath the shoulders. Squeeze your elbows in. Take your toes under and feel your core firing up. Lift. Press into down dog. Take the left leg up and open that hip. Either stay here or step it behind. Wild thing, lifting the hips as high as you can. Open the chest. Side plank to knee tucks. One, two, three, four. Five, really lift the hips. Five more. Three, two, one. Plank. 
drop the knees down on the ground, come up onto your knees, and we're going to bring the hands onto the lower back. The fingertips are touching the lower back, and the lower back is lifting away from the fingertips. Walk your elbows in towards each other, keep walking them. Soften the chest, lifting the heart up towards the ceiling. Lift, lift, lift. Lifting the lower back away from the fingertips. And exhale in child's pose. Great. Coming out of this, we're going to take the toes under and come into a yogic squat. Hands in prayer, elbows opening the knees. And here, within yourself, silently repeat OM ten times each time you inhale. Great, walk your hands to the front. And let's bring the right knee forward, pigeon. Here you will keep your hips level with the floor, which means that you may need to adjust how far your shin bone is from you. You may wanna walk your hips closer to your heel, heel closer to your body. You can walk further away if you wanna deepen the pose. You will feel a stretch in your hip. And with each exhalation, allowing the body to relax, to soften, feeling the stretch, feeling the body, tuning into the body and into the breath. Allowing everything else to drop away, to disappear, turning the gaze, the attention to the present moment, feeling the body and having gratitude for the body, for having the body, for being, for having this beautiful host. For once, not judging ourselves, not judging who we are, our body, our mind, but having gratitude for what we are, for who we are, for how we are, and moving forward with gratitude because nothing comes out of guilt and lack of self-acceptance or acceptance in general. We blossom in the presence of love and self-love is part of all love. It's one expression of love. Feel free to lower down here, keeping the rib cage lifted and the spine elongated and breathe into your hips, softening.
exhaling through the hips so visualizing your exhalation going out from the hip area where the muscles generally generally tighten and a lot of the tension in the body is held there Again, gently twist to your right here. And coming up all the way into down dog, a few circles with the right knee. Take the left foot, chin bone forward, level the hips, adjust. Your stance here, ribcage lifted, choose if you want to stay up or lower down and breathe again, coming back to the breath and feeling the body and feeling a little bit of a challenge here. We don't want to be completely, completely too uncomfortable or too comfortable. We want to find that balance of growth and stepping out of the familiar which often symbolizes rut, stagnation, stepping out of it, but not being, not pushing too much either. So finding that middle path where we're growing with ease. We're finding strength and we're building strength. Physical strength is just a representation of finding inner strength. We want to build strength with integrity rather than desperate pushing. We want to find integrity and ease as we build strength into the body. And that's why we work so much on the core. a little bit of a twist here to the left keep that tailbone extended right hip down back into down dog drop the knees down or booty down and we're going to grab our pillow if we have a pillow something else would work around the house too something that you can squeeze between the legs and lower down onto your back. Now we're going to squeeze the pillow. Most people have a pillow at home, but if you have something else, you can place a ball um, or a book even can work. Just be creative. And here we're going to work with Mula Bandha, which is the root chakra. We're going to Engage Mula Bandha, which is the Kegel muscle, as if you're contracting and stopping yourself from peeing. That's somewhat what it feels like, although Mula Bandha is a <sighs> it's, its own thing. But anyways, keep working, isolating the perineum and feeling exactly where it is. So we're going to contract Mula Bandha or the Kegel muscle and we're going to squeeze the pillow in and we're going to bring the lower back onto the ground so if you place your fingers underneath your back there is no gap no space between the body and the floor holding this for 15 seconds so we're really activating our base so we're not here we're <laughs> everywhere balanced and with a strong root chakra open heart active fourth chakra great release let's go again squeezing the pillow a bulky pillow is better or something bulky so the knees are 
kind of hip width apart and squeeze pull mula banda in and tuck your tailbone so it's a pelvic tilt lower back on the ground squeeze it this is hard it's a lot of work this is not easy it just looks easy but it's a lot of work and it's great not just for anxiety but incontinence uh, sexual dysfunction prostate um, issues with elimination or simulation let's go again and definitely it's one of the main poses as far as I'm concerned for anxiety because it brings us into the body release let's go again squeeze draw the navel in tuck the tailbone under really squeeze hold release let's go again squeeze you should really feel this really squeeze this is isometric work so you have to do the work it's no there is no external work here release squeeze let's go again squeeze and hold flatten the lower back this is really strengthening the adductor muscles it's great for the hip flexors too let's go again it's preventative for injuries that um, can occur with the groin uh, hip flexors uh, pelvis hips this is really balancing for the hips and for the pelvis, so it's really, really good on many levels. Release, let's go again. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Mula banda is lifting, engaged. Release, let's go again, squeeze. Great, release, and you can bring your pillow to the side, bridge pose, so the hands are facing each other, elbows planted down, lift the hips high, press into the four corners of each foot, and really lift the hips here. Open the chest, so we're working the chest towards the chin, really lift. Great, release down, lift the legs up, and either halfway into supported plow pose, or if you're familiar with plow pose all the way, up and over the head, hands clasping. Either stay here or feel free to shift in shoulder stand. And lower back down into plow. Bend the knees over the ears slowly coming out hands underneath the hips lower the legs down and let's bring the knees into the chest happy baby rocking here appreciating the joyous element in life tapping into the joyous element of life appreciating emptiness being empty, empty of thoughts, but rather present. Let's bring the hands behind the knees, rocking up to sit it, coming back to where we began. 
easy pose sukhasana and just take a moment to see how you feel compared to the beginning of the class now we are going to bring the right hand onto the left shoulder and thread your left arm under and give yourself a form of a hug here take a moment right here in holding space for yourself a calming pose and let's change here And now we're going to bring both hands under the armpits, essentially, or on the upper back. And over the shoulders. Inhale your hands all the way over the head. Let's bring the hands over the third eye for always being connected and seeing the truth. Over the throat for always expressing ourselves with balance, not too much, not too little, not saying too much, not saying too little. But finding the balance of expression and creative expression, creative output, self-expression. Hands over the heart, for always being connected to our own heart, for always honoring our own heart, for giving and receiving freely, for appreciating, understanding and being connected to love, being guided by love, and thus having faith and trust Trust, trusting life, trusting the process of living because we're guided by love. Thanks for joining me today. I'll see you on the mat next Sunday. Namaste.